Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to compute some basic limits. So let's just start right away by doing an example. So EX means example. Let's look at the limit, LIM, as X approaches uh, 1 of, let's just say, uh, X plus 4. And this is a really simple example just to get you started. So recall that this means we're, we're trying to find what happens to X plus 4 when x gets really close to one. That's what's going on intuitively here. But in practice, to compute limits like this, the rule is very simple. So here's the most important rule. If you can take this number right here, and you can plug it in, and you actually get an answer, like you get a number, you're done, okay? So if you can do that, you're done. And whenever you do that, it's really important to drop the limit sign. Now, if you can't, plug it in. Like if you don't get an answer, then you have to do something else, right? What What is that something else? Well, that's calculus, right? So there's, there's a lot of stuff you can do. So in this case, we can plug in the one because one plus four is five. So you just plug it in, you don't write the limit sign, and then one plus four is equal to five. And that's it. That's the answer. It's actually that easy. Let's do another one. Let's take the limit as x approaches negative two of x squared minus three. So same thing, we ask ourselves, can we take this number, this negative two, and put it where the x is and actually get an answer? Like, is it okay to do it? Well, sure, right, we can plug that in and we're not dividing by zero, we're not taking the square root of negative numbers, uh, we're only dealing with real numbers here, so square root of negative numbers are uh, a no-no for us, right? We're dealing with real valued functions. So here, plugging in negative two, again, you drop the limit sign, negative two squared minus three. Whenever you uh, square a negative like this, you just get a positive, right? So it's positive four, so it's four minus three, and that's equal to one. Boom, there it is. So really simple, right? And that always works as long as you get an answer. So let's do an example where uh, it won't work. Let's take the limit as, let's say, x approaches zero of, how about this, x over x squared minus x. So let's try it, right? You should always try it. That should always be your first attempt. So if you plug in zero here, what happens? You get zero over zero squared minus zero. So that's just going to be zero over zero. Oh no, that's no good, right? You can't have that. You can never have zero on the bottom, so that doesn't work. So what do we do? Well, we do something else. In this case, factoring is going to be a good idea. So let's go ahead and rewrite our original problem. So limit. Notice I'm writing the limit sign again. You always have to write the limit sign until you plug in the number, okay? So, or, or take the limit. Um, so we, we're not plugging in the number in this step. What we're gonna do is we're going to factor out an x here from the denominator. I'm gonna put an x here, and then a parentheses, and then x times what is x squared, so x, and then x times negative one, that would be negative x. And look what happens here. Boom, it cancels. So this is equal to limit. So it's really important to write that limit sign. And this is one over, that's, that's probably one of the most common mistakes that people make is, you know, you always have to write the limit sign until you plug the number in. Now we are finally at a point where we can take this zero and plug it in. So this is equal to one over and then zero minus one, which is one over negative one, which is just negative one. Really nice, so again, the general rule is if you can plug in the number and you get an answer, do it. If you cannot plug in the number, um, try something else, right? Factoring is one of the most important things um, that you can typically do in, in problems like this. Let's do another one. Let's take the limit as x approaches one of x squared minus one over x minus one. 
So again, first thing you always want to try is you want to try to plug in that number. So let's plug in one. That's going to give us one squared minus one over and then one minus one. One squared is one. So again, you get zero over zero. That's no good. In mathematics, you cannot have zero on the bottom. Okay, it's not allowed. So we'll try something else. And that something else is again factoring. This is the limit as x approaches one. So here you can factor this. This is going to be the difference of squares. The formula is a squared minus b squared equals a minus b times a plus b. So here it's x squared minus one. It's x squared minus one squared. So it'll be x minus one, x plus one. So it's x minus one, x plus one, all divided by x minus one. Notice again that I wrote the x minus uh, the limit sign, right? Super important, right? You you always write it until you take the limit. Boom goes away. This is the limit as x approaches one, and then here we're left with x plus one. Now we have finally reached the point where we can take that number and plug it in. And if you recall, when you do that, that's when you drop the limit sign. So now you don't write it, okay? One plus one, and that's equal to two. Boom, that's the limit. So really nice uh, problems. Uh, hopefully this has helped you. Uh, what happens if you don't know what to do? <laughs> that's the thing. Sometimes there'll be cases where um, you know the limit does not exist or you get infinity, stuff like that. But yeah, hopefully this video has been helpful and hopefully you've learned something. Good luck.